I'm very, very pleased to welcome today Lynn hirschman lean and Alex Chauvaniak. Is that right? Pronounced correctly? Yes, and it's Leeson. Oh, Leeson. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Sometimes it's, it's, uh, it's all right. difficult with the, uh, with the American names. But you brought a very, very important historical documentary to the Berlin Island, also very relevant for the Teddy Award, Feminist Art Revolution. That sounds very big and very important. What is it about, Lisa? Uh, it, it's about, um, it's really about freedom of, of expression and uh, the fight against discrimination and uh, an inspiring story by people who are not in any of the history books and this history has never been told about the steps that people took to reinvent themselves into a culture and reorganize a culture so that they could be heard and uh, and be be, uh, be accepted and be part of that mm -hmm. so um, you know it tracks people from the time they were in their 20s all the way until they're in their 70s about how they accomplished this goal and what kind of creative means they did in order to uh, overcome a lot of the repression that people don't know about. Mm -hmm. It's never talked about. It's never talked about because it's never been recorded or mm -hmm. historified. So how, how, would you, how would you define this, um, this do dominance and this, this repression? How, how was it? Like it's it was, the the, the movie uh, the the documentary basically talks about women really claiming their space within within art and within the within the art scene, which was very very male dominated. Yeah, still and, is. And it still <laughs> is. But you've come a long way. You have to say, you really really have come a long way, and you you accomplished a lot. Um, not what really. I feel. You don't feel? You don't feel <laughs> I that? I think just okay. it's only in the last couple of years that there's been any acknowledgement, mm -hmm. you know, of this. But still, the numbers are very difficult and you know also um, in the film outlines with, with Harmony Hammond and with, with maybe four or five of the women uh, about um, you know coming out as, as lesbian artists mm -hmm. and uh, having the first lesbian shows and what that meant and um, it, it's not in the film but it's in the archive which is uh, completely accessible so you can see like all of the 400 hours you know what they went through and what they had to fight and what those struggles mm -hmm. were in order to uh, to have some sort of an inroad where rather than inserting us in the system, they made their own system mm -hmm. and worked outside to deal with some of the social uh, issues and the relevant um, matters of, of social justice in culture mm -hmm. uh, to make change. Mm -hmm. So Alex, as a representative of the younger generation, how do you feel about it? Do you feel that there's been something accomplished within the past decades that you can probably profit from? Yeah, I mean, I think that the most important thing to take away from it is, yes, we still have a lot of work to do. Yes, we still have to work hard to change the power structures and to continue to ask questions and create awareness about our presence and build community. But in terms of something really palpable that um, the film has offered me personally, and I think a lot of women of my generation can relate to is uh, a lineage, a sense of context that we understand we're part of a lineage of women artists who um, provide support and have been dealing with a lot of the same issues that we're still dealing with while we still have the responsibility to respond to our own context. Mm -hmm. So it's very powerful. And you know, you have to understand that it was a great leap forward to realize that there was no history. Yeah. And mm -hmm. it was the late 60s before people, you know, and really having this been inspired in very significant way by the Black Panther Party, mm -hmm. uh, which were the role models, not just for Judy Chicago, but for uh, for now and many of the women's group to take that, that action and to, one, know that there wasn't a history, create fictional history, and then try to revive or revamp or excavate mm -hmm. any information so that, you know, it could be passed down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I think one topic which is also very important to talk about is to... I know as a reaction to, to this male-dominated space, you organize yourselves as, as women artists, but then it's also important to acknowledge the difference within you know, these women's groups, you know, that, that there were women of color that probably had a very different perspective on life yeah. than, than white women who, who definitely uh, enjoy other privileges. So how did you deal with these dif differences? I was, with, I was aware women? of them, mm -hmm. you know, and I was really um, 
really adamant about it, including mm -hmm. all of the various um, uh, gender, racial, and economic um, elements that uh, class elements that people were fighting with within the movement and which really broke it up um, you know where had, had they been less divided you know could have probably made an earlier and stronger impact uh, but you know this is what happens when you have small fac small groups that then splinter into factions because everybody's powerless mm -hmm. and uh, in the film um, uh, one of the women, Howardina Pindell, uh, talks about in an artwork there's uh, an inherent vice, something that's wrong with it. And you know, the fact that this was such a small um, movement with and, and externally powerless, you know, the power came really from within and fr from the source of one's creativity. Um, how one dealt with that and how one dealt with the factions and the jealousies, you mm -hmm. know, when people did uh, mm -hmm. um, uh, achieve anything and overriding that. Mm -hmm. Uh, in an inspirational way. How did you deal with it personally? Which, with, which with, issue? With, with like all, <laughs> with this, with this, with these differences and with with jealousy and how how did you come to terms with it? How did you find strategies to to well, deal with it? Uh, you know, again, you know, the the personal, the political is one of the mottos of the feminist uh, art movement, and you know, dealing with it individually and trying to raise one's own <laughs> consciousness either through some sort of groups or through literature through reading, you know, it's a, a, a great wealth of material that's out there, which is what we have in our little graphic novel. We have a 57 page book that has every, uh, every article, book, magazine, performance, film done since 1960 mm -hmm. to the present. Mm -hmm. You know, so understanding that there was that and going back um, and using that as kind of, uh, again, a guideline of, of courage. And I really think this film is about courage, you know, about breaking boundaries, breaking glass ceilings, and continue to, to have confidence in one's own voice, despite the resistance of culture. Mm -hmm. um, so, from your perspective, Alex, how do you feel that this oppression is still going on today? Um, I think that there's a sense that um, that we're no longer dealing with a repression or an oppression. That that sort of uh, been relegated to something that's been dealt with and we can just sort of um, move forward and I think that it is really important to continue to ask the questions and to actually um, you know I think for the first time we actually have an opportunity to use uh, technology to build communities both local and global that um, really uh, reach out and touch upon the incredible diversity of uh, women making art. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that uh, to be able to, as I say, continue to ask those questions and create that awareness um, and that sense of community that uh, that will sort of trigger people to realize, um, you know, this is not something that's over. This is something that we still have to, in any industry that you're in, we have to come together mm -hmm. and deal with. So, so practically, how do you integrate these things into your artwork? Um, well, actually, from a, a really, we can talk about it in abstract terms, but something that's really concrete is that um, Lynn has, uh, in addition to the graphic novel, there are many extensions to the film uh, itself. Many, It's an expanded cinema, and one of the um, really... Uh, one of the really real uh, aspects is uh, an online archive, a wiki that we have um, called the Raw War. And that really uh, allows, <laughs> through technology, social media that simply didn't exist before now, uh, to bring together women to uh, upload their artwork uh, that highlights the achievements and practices of women artists and actually creates a starting point of discussion wherever you are, uh, either in an educational context or uh, community context, to start that dialogue and uh, really have a, a concrete place to share your voice. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to make a film that had no outtakes. You know, because <laughs> women have traditionally been the outtakes of history. Yeah, yeah. You know, they, it's, it's almost like they weren't taken out because they were never put in there in the first mm -hmm. place. So when you have <laughs> Uh, 13,000 minutes of film, you have an 82 minute film, what happens to the rest of it? And so that was the instigation for creating a system at Stanford University to have everything available and uploaded and cross-referenced 
which is there now. They were able to get a Library of Congress grant so that, uh, you know, rather than seeing two minutes of an uh, interview in a film of a selected passage, you could see 17 hours of that person or, mm. or 25 hours of, of Judy Chicago and, and make, you know, sen sen uh, use that as, as, as key research material and make different kinds of narratives. And knowing, one, that the, the amount of material that I was able to collect is so minimal to what actually happened, even though, you know, it's a massive amount of material. It's not everything, and what happens in the future. So, how do future, you know, generations have the ability to add their voice to a history? So, the the wiki, what we did, we teamed with YouTube. So, it's really a media wiki that allows um, video, JPEGs, uh, um, uh, all kinds of linkage systems, text to be uploaded by themes in the film as well as decade and. In the installation, you use a Wii controller inside a flashlight. So you shine a light on an empty room and all these, it, or on a date or a theme, and everything that's in there comes forward. So we've, we've created a, one, a database that is an ongoing and live living, as well as a visualization for that that's seen you know, through this uh, installation. Mm -hmm. And I, I think the searchability is really important of it because what it does is it allows you to actually uh, continue the thread on all of those different themes in the films. Like if you want to uh, be able to bring together a uh, community and have a discussion about um, lesbian art and artist, gender sexuality, its intersections, with race and class and um, global perspectives, you can all of a sudden link that through keywords and actually start to have, uh, you know, uh, key references and uh, build community. And that is actually tackling also something I was wondering when I when I watched the documentary because I understood that uh, in the 70s and 80s it was very important to organize yourselves as as women artists to really stress this this you know women part of feminist point. But then talking out of a perspective. Uh, from the 21st century, living in you know like queer identities and breaking binaries and boundaries, how much sense does it make to talk about women? Is it is it? Can you talk about women still, or aren't we trying to get over this? If you want to be a bit avant-garde and and futuristic. Yeah, I think that we've expanded that. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that that was a starting point for you know the kind of repression that 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 incited. Uh, the action of, of people taking control of their own uh, voices and, and making actions um, in the world and really having, having an effect. But truly, as we move forward, or even as we move backwards, that, that category is expanded so that you do have things that weren't, uh, weren't accessible, that there were no words for you know, earlier on. And uh, so, so that... Um, uh, other linkage uh, ideas um, will be generated, you know, mm -hmm. and self-generating through this forum. Mm -hmm. And I, I really think that that and and uh, you know this the you know all the elements. It's more than a film, you know. It's all it's really a living kind of live legacy to mm -hmm. the past and the future. And however that develops, and really it will be up to people who take control of it to to shape it and to reshape it and to repattern it. And it's letting that go into the world, no matter what. I thought I, it sounds a little bit that this is your task in a way, Alex, to, <laughs> yeah. to take care of it. <laughs> well, it's, <laughs> and it's, it's, we all have to take it's it. It's our, out. it's our, yeah, yeah definitely, it's, it's our, but our I, task. I think that for the first time, we can talk about a both end as opposed to having to deal with like a blanket that you then distill into smaller. Uh, themes that people can identify with. All of a sudden, you can talk about um, uh, these issues that are uh, both really uh, intimate and specific and individual, and then talk about it in the, in, uh, alongside the context of, um, you know, what it, uh, the experience of, of um, being a woman or identifying as female. Um, it's, I think it's a both end. It's no longer like, okay, we have to start with like a, a, a blanket theme to create unity to get through this. We can actually uh, talk about that um, uh, diverse and often richly conflicted um, uh, field. Mm -hmm. So let's assume you would have supernatural powers and you could transform the world Right at this we do. minute, <laughs> you do you know? right, right now. <laughs> what would you do right away? Like, what would what is the biggest vision or dream? Or, um, I mean, you're doing it in a way. Really, it's true. But, but if you could do it right away, with all these all the powers you could choose from, what would you do? <laughs> well, I th I think I think what one creates is a gesture of conversation. 
and dialogue. Mm -hmm. And uh, as Alex said, this was never possible before. You know, before you would have the, the ability to have slides or images that you would send and, and the reference in the film is like an underground railway. You would send these slides and there'd be this time lag. There's no time lag, there's no geographic lag uh, at this at this point. So it's, you know, what creating the system, you know, that, that allows um, individual and collective input simultaneously mm -hmm. and instant historification. Mm -hmm. So I think that part of this is letting go the idea of control over what this, what will happen to this, you know, but just really creating a tool and a vehicle for um, for uh, information systems and community building and um, and linkages that uh, that now exists mm -hmm. that that didn't even two months ago. <laughs> <laughs> and we just literally we just did the world premiere at Sundance and we didn't know if it was going to work, but it does. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's your perspective on it? Uh, I think that it's really important to. Uh, you, what I would do is I would uh, be adamant about uh, using new technology systems of democratization to really change a lot of the uh, socio-cultural impediments that are in place that keep women from being able to dedicate themselves to their practice, which is such a fundamental thing because the structures of many of our cultures don't permit that. Um, so to really rethink the way that um, we enter into the world, our systems of education, the way that we can uh, raise families have uh, uh, to be able to, um, the, the really, uh, I don't want to say practical, but the fundamental things of, of aspects of human existence and how we allow ourselves to, uh, how we facilitate creative expression. Um, and, yeah. and it's not just women. You know, yeah. I, I just wanted to ask, what's, yeah. what's the yeah. male's role, maybe, also? I think, I think what this is, is um, really about anybody taking control of, of, taking control of who they are in their culture, and now it's a world culture, and really um, uh, bypassing any kind of repression or prejudice or discrimination through, you know, finding a different kind of means for communication. Mm -hmm. So um, I think, you know, this particular film started out based on you know what became the feminist art movement but it, it's more than that you know it's really really is about um, uh, that kind of um, really negative um, uh, form of, of uh, uh, silencing that, that we don't have to accept and finding out the tools and community to really erase uh, uh, those kinds of um, mentalities which are old world. <laughs> they are. They, are <laughs> they don't fit into the future if we want to have a future. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think as we become, um, you know, an international and global community, um, we need to think about what it means to be cosmopolitan and what it means to be able to accept um, other cultures and maintain uh, local and national and personal identities functioning on a with global interconnectedness and I think that uh, that requires uh, an incredible amount I, I would my I would want to be able to uh, see people uh, understand what what it really means acceptance means uh, to eradicate discrimination. Thank you guys very much for this very, very inspiring <laughs> documentary and talk. Thank and you. please enjoy the Berlinale. And thank you very much for contributing the film to the Teddy Awards, too, as well. Thank you.